Welcome back to San Francisco, everybody. This is Dave Vellante for theCUBE and our coverage of RSA 2023. This is day three, hump day, it's Wednesday. We're going to be here all, all week. We, we're going through Thursday. We've been wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Really excited to have Nayaki Nayar, who's the CEO of Securonix, and Omer Singer, uh, who is head of cybersecurity strategy at Snowflake, both CUBE alum. <laughs> Great to see you both again. Good to be back, Dave. On. Thank you, Dave. We are glad to be here, and I'm a CUBE uh, veteran now. Many <laughs> times, <laughs> you know. And, you know, so I was going to ask you, so yeah. you, you know, you've been executive in the industry, obviously hot space, why, why, why did you decide to come lead Securonix? Yeah, you know, I will tell you, Securonix is in a very, very uh, phenomenal space right now. Um, we have been a leader in the entire SIM market for the last four years in a row, uh, in the Gardner Magic Quadrant. And when you look at the entire market, SIM market, uh, Dave, it's a $5 billion market, predicted to be approximately 10 plus billion uh, by uh, 2025, going at nice double-digit CAGR, and have, we have a massive opportunity to uh, go from where we are to a quarter billion or half a billion over the next two to three years. But well, we were at your event the other night, and I was talking to some of the, the folks at your company, and they were saying, the is coming in, and really focusing us, laying out a vision, yeah. roadmap. I mean, that's kind of what you do. It's like yeah. your superpower. Yeah. So, so that's, that's kind of cool. Can you tell us a little bit about that? What yeah, can you tell us? Yeah, at this event, we actually uh, rolled out our uh, new vision, the vision and the strategy for the next uh, two to three years, uh, which is what we call the Unified Defense Sim. And a big part of that strategy, uh, Dave, is how we are partnering with Snowflake to be the data lake uh, for us going forward. And with this partnership, our entire SIM as an offering will run on Snowflake's data lake. The security data lake will become the partner going forward, offering this for all of our customers. So you, That's guys, a one. you guys have a lot going on. I mean, you, yeah. got, you, you, got, you, you sort of flip to have an industry go-to-market structure, so we're just seeing all kinds of new industries pop up on the Snowflake data cloud. Security is obviously a key use case. Yeah. Uh, how's that going? Uh, give us the update on you know, the uptake there. Yeah, so uh, you remember we met back in June when we first announced the cybersecurity workload because we've had so many customers ask us, how can we use Snowflake to help scale our cybersecurity program? We got all this security data, it's overwhelming us, it's driving the costs through the roof, the data's very siloed, help us with it. And, and so we've been taking that very seriously and we've been uh, collaborating with the Securonics team very closely and um, what Ayaki mentioned is launching is both a product and it's a go-to-market effort, where now when customers ask us, hey, can Snowflake help us with our security challenges at scale? We do have this way of bringing the work to the data and helping them to solve that on Snowflake. Yeah. So you have all the data, yeah. right, tons of it. Yeah. You got the platform. Yeah. So uh, the idea, obviously, to put that data inside the platform or in, in, in however you, you say that, bringing <laughs> the platform to the data, right? Yeah. I mean, the work to the data. It's yeah. Yeah. Kind of yeah. Work to the data is kind of an interesting way to think about it because you're not yeah. necessarily, you know, it, data's everywhere. So yeah. you guys got an interesting architecture. But my question, Nick, is what does that enable a you customer? to do? Yeah, so uh, when you look at from a customer perspective, mm. Dave, right? Customers run our entire uh, Securonix SIM platform for detecting all the threats, for investigating those threats, and responding to the threats. And with this new version, what we call the Unified Defense SIM, with we running on Snowflake's data lake, it really helps our customers go from a seven days of hot search, which used to be the uh, offering that we had before, to a full 365 days. None of the customers had 365 days before, so with this new offering, now customers can search full 365 days of hot search. And this capability, Dave, there's no other vendor in the market has it. Massive comparative yeah. differentiation and, for us right you, now. And you know what they were doing with the data before when it was, let's say, seven days in hot, it was then siloed in different places. And, mm. and Snowflake is all about breaking down those silos. So if we could do that for security teams and give them the confidence that there is one place that they know they can go to and they will find the security data that they need to answer their questions, that's a huge shift and a big relief for cybersecurity teams. Well, why couldn't they do it before? Was it just too expensive, too complicated, It was very too expensive hard? before. I mean, just doing, we had seven days of hot search, 90 days of warm search, and everything was cold. Uh, and it was, a lot of it was driven by the cost and the expense. But by moving to Snowflake, now we have broken down those tiers, right? There's no hot, warm, cold. There's one tier of all hot search, and they get full 365 days, and we are providing at a price point that is extremely price competitive 
uh, yes. in the market. So yeah. a lot of conventional wisdom is always, well, the data gets old and then it's not useful. That's not the case in security, yeah. is it? Yeah. No, yeah. data is king, right? <laughs> uh, data is the new oil. So while we have all the security data, we also do believe the actual data storage itself is not a comparative representation. Of course, Snowflake does that um, beautifully, but where Securonix comparative strength is, is in threat content. So as a part of the unified defense sim, we have also released what we call threat content as a service, where not only we as Securonix are contributing more and more threat content on our platform, but we are also opening up where our customers and partners can contribute threat content. Similar to, let me give you a very simple example, Dave. You know, if you think of from a Netflix perspective, Netflix doesn't differentiate because of the platform. It really differentiates by the content it delivers, right? So think of it that way. It's not just the platform and the data. It really is a threat content that we deliver on top of this platform that truly sets us apart. We have a very, very strong threat research lab at Securonix, the most advanced threat research lab that we release threat content very, very proactively and timely for our customers so to take so advantage of. And the of. value of all of that content is multiplied when you can apply it across a year's worth of data rather than, okay, great research, now you apply it to maybe a week's window. Yeah. That's limited, right, and it limits the value. And that's where Snowflake can focus on being the best data platform, and Securonix can focus on doing that research and having the content to apply across that really 365 uh, day window. So the platform's an enabler. Yeah. So one of the other things, I mean, Snowflake, you know, boiling it down. It's, it's hard to get here, but it's simple, <laughs> and you can you can share data. Yeah. Right. And so, is how is that data sharing, data sharing that's governed and secure? How is that of a benefit to customers in the context of security in that use case? Yeah. So I mean, in addition to what we call the threat content as a service, right, which is a big part of our unified defense sim, another thing that we have also rolled out is what we call peer-to-peer uh, -peer collaboration, right? Mm -hmm. Where we are enabling customers to collaborate with each other on this uh, threat content and threat intel. And just to give you an example, let's say if there are two uh, airline companies, American Airlines and United Airlines, I mean, they will compete with each other on airlines as a business, but when it comes to cybersecurity, they would want to share content, right, or share intel, and the platform enables them to do that peer-to-peer -peer collaboration. Uh, that's another big way, in fact, this is what we call, we can help them proactively defend um, any threats by collaborating with each other and being ahead of um, the competitors here. What is the state of collaboration in the industry today? Uh, I mean, the example Nayaki just gave is, I, I think that's probably pretty common, but, but how about even amongst the technology, well, first of all, how common is that? And then, what about uh, amongst the technology industry? There was, I know several years ago there was attempts, we have a private data set, we're going to try to yeah. monetize that right. private yeah. data set. And that caused a lot of you know, criticism. And I think that's changed, but I'm, as a security pro, I'm yeah. interested in I'll, I'll tell you what I'm excited about. I think once all this data is in the data cloud, and it could be shared, data includes the insights on the data, things like what are the KPIs, the metrics, with which the security program is being measured. If I can start sharing that, maybe anonymized, maybe governed sufficiently, now I can see how's my program faring compared to my cohorts, compared to my industry, com and, and that's super valuable for a security leader to know. How are they doing compared to others? So that kind of data sharing doesn't really exist today, and, and I think there's a lot of uh, demand for that kind of data sharing, and once everything is happening in the data cloud, it then becomes feasible from a technological perspective. Yeah. Well, part of the problem is how do you share that data oh, yeah. you yeah. Know, securely? I mean, you yeah. could call your friend up and say, hey, oh, this yeah. is what we're seeing. No, 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 the 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 platform <laughs> enables them <laughs> yeah. to share it so in yeah. a more securely form. So in other words, yeah. like you, you could say, all right, I, I'm going to grant access yeah. to yeah. my colleague yeah. who maybe ha who's maybe no, part of the No, we use GitHub for, for allowing customers to share uh, so that kind of that. data. Okay, so. Yeah, but, well, I mean, we'll go into a lot more technical details in that, but that's uh, very, I would say, in the very initial stages, Dave, uh -huh. where we have seen that requests come from a lot of our customers to enable them to do it and uh, we are slowly but surely releasing more and more of that functionality for our customers to be able to collaborate with each other on that. So yeah. the threat content as a service, yeah. who, what, what is that? How do I consume that as a customer? Uh, there are a lot of uh, use cases, threat uh, use cases that we deliver on a, a very periodically basis in a timely manner that customers have access. Well, when, as we release it, 
we release it into our customer's landscape so the customers can start using it and start leveraging it. As a for, subscription. For hunting, yeah, for yeah. threat. Yeah, it's, it's as a subscription. And I was Absolutely. impressed, I uh, saw a demo of this yesterday and what Securonix is doing now is they're actually checking to see where are your gaps and where's your security program maybe missing a certain data source or missing a certain detection that it should have and then being able to deliver that to the customer based on what they've identified as a gap. I mean, that's, that's really valuable. Yeah. Is the, is the outcome for customers that they can now, you mentioned proactive defense, I think yeah. you called it. Mm -hmm. So is that the outcome that you're trying to achieve, that they can defend now proactively as opposed to, hey, there's a fire, put it out? That is the whole point, right? Uh, enabling our customers to be proactive in defending against threats is the ultimate goal. Uh, and every time we deliver new and uh, latest content, I think that really helps them get closer and closer together. And it's a peer collaboration also helps but a bigger part of the entire platform, Dave, is also getting them uh, the full visibility into what we call the threat coverage, right? Where are they in their coverage for the MITRE framework or the NIST framework? Uh, that's another big part of uh, the entire platform where it's not just um, uh, an experience for the analyst that we want to deliver, but also extending that to a, a CXO or a CISO experience where they can see from a full coverage perspective where they are in their entire maturity framework, yeah. Now you sit on some boards, right? Yeah. What's the board level? I mean, I remember having this conversation with Robert Gates, gosh, mid last decade, the, the yeah. former defense secretary, yeah. who also you know, sits on a lot of boards, and he's like, absolutely, it's a board level issue. Yeah. Now, he's sitting on some big companies, right? So is, is it become mainstream at the board level? Yeah. You know, uh, cyber security is no longer just a CIO or a CISO issue anymore for every large uh, enterprise. It has become a board topic. Uh, every public board is now required, especially the audit committees are now required, to disclose if there is any significant reach within four business days. And yes, I, I do sit on a couple of public boards. I'm on uh, audit committee also. And uh, the CISOs are now required to come present every quarter, every board meeting, where they are in that entire uh, journey. Especially, and everyone is using different frameworks, but NIST framework is one thing that I've seen most of the CISOs use to present that to the board and come back and share that uh, with the board, right? How, so, what are those conversations like? Because w when I get into, I mean, I've been in this business a long time, and I'm no SecOps pro. Yeah. But but I you know, I, I can absorb you know technology pretty pretty well. Yeah. And your eyes just bleed when you get the acronyms and the yeah. complexity. Yeah. I mean, it's so when somebody goes into the anatomy of a hack. Yeah. It's like wow. I got to read that again, and yeah. I, over and over. Yeah. So what, is there an education going on at the board level? It is. is it like how, how are they able to absorb such complexity, or is it just at a high level? How does that dynamic well, work? Well, that is why every board is uh, now required. I mean, they are really hunting for uh, industry experts, uh, CISOs to be on their board <laughs> also to provide that uh, expert guidance, but there's definitely a lot of education happening. Uh, NACD is providing a lot of education around that but all the boards are now following certain frameworks. NIST framework is one of the frameworks that most boards are following to understand where the company is in their uh, maturity framework, right? So that makes it a little easier for boards to follow and understand. But again, I agree with you, it's a complex topic, yeah, yeah. right, for, for any board to really get into the details. Uh, but most boards are, I would say, doing a lot of work around it. But yeah, you got to yeah. speak wallet yeah. here, business, yeah. right? You can't. Yeah. So I get it. So it's a maturity model. Yeah. Here's where we are, and here's where we want to get. Here's how long it's going to take. Yeah. This is what it's going to yeah. going to cost. Here's the risks of, you know, the yeah. scenario, things like that, right? Yeah. That yeah, and and I think this is also part of cybersecurity joining the modern data stack and the security leaders being able to use the same kind of tooling that maybe sales leaders or marketing leaders have been using, right? Like BI tools to see how are we doing, not just at a quarterly board review, yeah. but day to day, right? Being able to follow along. Once all the security data is in your data cloud, now you can use BI tooling to see all of that together in one place, and we've really then kind of brought cybersecurity into the fold, the way the rest of the company gets insights from data. Yeah, well, I'll say this, you know, when you look at this space, cybersecurity, it's a very fragmented market, mm -hmm. right? the number of tools, technologies, products, tech stacks that every customer has or every large enterprise has is very, I call it a Frankenstein's mess. So having a security data lake, this partnership that we are doing with uh, Snowflake, it really helps customers bring all that security data into one single holistic data lake, provide the insights, right, and get the insights that they're looking for, but truly now extend that insights beyond just a SOC analyst 
to a CXO level. I mean, it really brings uh, a lot of structure to that fragmentation that is in the market right is now. Is there a go-to-market relationship as yeah, well? Yeah, we are actually, we are going to be uh, going to market together because now we have embedded our um, Snowflake data lake into our stack jointly. Customers have a choice to bring their own Snowflake or they can off, uh, buy the entire embedded Snowflake offering from us. And yes, both of our yeah. go-to-market teams are going together. By the way, okay, so an obvious yeah. target is that go to Snowflake customers and say, hey, what are you doing for security? We can help. Absolutely. Or if you're not a Snowflake customer, That's right. we have and embedded that stack, right? Yeah. So we're, we're seeing a tremendous amount of sim migrations. Yeah. A lot of our customers are trying to figure out their strategy, and so if they can take that opportunity of rethinking their SIM strategy to align that with how the rest of the company handles data, right, and go with this approach where it's a very seamless integration, that just makes all the sense uh, the world, and it's very cost effective, which, which counts now, right? You do need yeah. to think about that, the, the bottom line, how much you're going to be spending on this as the, the amount of data scales up, and, uh, and we can deliver on, on that for our yeah. customers. So, you know, thinking about the cost effectiveness, I mean, you've got the marginal economics of adding this use case are not huge. It's basically it's spinning not. up a <laughs> another yeah. virtual warehouse. And, and it's Sorry the architecture, and right? The separation of storage from compute here yeah. plays a very key role yeah. that the sims that try to kind of be vertically integrated and trying to solve the data challenge themselves, they just can't deliver that kind of cost effectiveness. Yeah. So if I'm a Snowflake customer, yeah. um, what do I have to do to get up you know, and running, and I don't want to know, if I'm not a Snowflake customer, what's yeah. the experience like? So in both ways, if a customer is an existing Snowflake customer, uh, they can run our entire SIM on their Snowflake. We call it bring your own Snowflake, right? Yeah. So that okay. is uh, already available. But if a customer doesn't have Snowflake, uh, and they can buy the entire stack from us with embe Snowflake embedded into it, and they can run that too, right? So we have both the offerings, and in both cases, like I said, uh, customers can do a full 365 days of hot search. It's a single tier model, there's no hot, warm, cold. Uh, threat content as a service is automated, is available in the platform with the peer-to-peer -peer collaboration. And I can't say uh, enough about the competitive differentiation we bring in with the unified experience. This is something, Dave, we have UEBA, we have SIM, we also have SOAR into the platform so that customers have a full, what we call end-to-end -end experience for detecting the threats, investigating them, and also providing a, a full end-to-end -end response, right? So, that's a so big you, one for you're us. You're here meeting with customers, you're obviously talking to them about this capability. What's, what's their response? How, how, what, what's going to be their experience and how do they take advantage of this? What's that on-ramp We, we like? just had a big launch event yesterday yeah. uh, and we had a lot of customers, it was sold out. We had we were to- turning people away at the We door, had to turn yeah. people away <laughs> from the luncheon because we couldn't accom accommodate everyone, so. Yeah. It was a phenomenal. You I mean, love that very, problem. Yeah, <laughs> we, we was a phenomenal. I've been on the other side of that too. It's <laughs> yeah, like, uh, <laughs> phenomenal <laughs> success, I would say. And um, every customer that we have talked, they're truly excited about the partnership. I mean, that's one. They're extremely excited about going from that 65 days of hot search. I think that's something that uh, they had been asking us, and now that we delivered, it's a, it's a big, massive benefit for them. And uh, and the journey ahead with this whole unified defense. SIM that we just launched, a lot of good excitement. Every customer that we talk to uh, now can start benefiting from, from this new vision that we have just launched. How unique yeah. is this? We are the only one right now, to be very honest. In fact, I shared in the launch, right, how we stack up against all the other SIM vendors uh, with the 365 days of hot search, the single tier storage, with the threat corner service, peer-to-peer -peer collaboration, built in so, right? When you look at all of the key capabilities that any customer would want, we are the, the primary uh, leading vendor in the entire stack right now. It's fantastic, yeah. congratulations, on, uh, and best of luck to both of you. We'll see you at the Snowflake Summit, I hope. Yep. Thank see you, you yeah. Thank we will you. definitely yeah, be, there be there at the June, Snowflake end Summit. Of, end of June at, uh, yeah. in Vegas, yeah. at Caesars Forum. It's going to be going to be fire marshal full. It was full last year. It's going <laughs> to, I know it's growing. Yeah. And uh, we had to go into the overflow for the keynotes. It was. Uh, yeah. Good, I'm going to have to get there early this year. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. look yeah. forward to it. And yeah. like I said, I'm a veteran of Cube, so I would love to be on, uh, on the session. Great, let's make June. it happen. Absolutely. We're there, I think, th yeah. at least three days, wall to yeah. wall, so it'd Absolutely. be good. All right, guys, thank thanks you, so much. Awesome. Appreciate thanks it. Thanks so much. All right, thank thanks. you for watching. Thanks. Keep it right there. Dave Vellante, John Furrier's in the house. The Cube's coverage of RSA 2023 continues right after this short break. <laughs>